Let's talk about a team that actually might end up playing Michigan in the college football playoff. Things go their way. That's number five, Washington. And they are traveling to record Dallas this weekend to play number 11, Oregon State. Off the rip, I got to tell you, producer Kyla comes up with the rundown and we talk about it. We make sure we know what we know and how we want to do the show for that night and that day. But I had to ask him, yo, man, am I reading it correctly that Oregon State is a two and a half point favorite against the Huskies? Like, yeah, dog, I double checked it too. That's what it's been like to play the Beavers basically since 2022, but especially in 2023. It's a good football team they got up there. Now, Washington, once again, has to knock off yet another ranked opponent to be the number five team in the country. I, If you're a Husky fan, I feel for you because this is absolute disrespect by the college football playoff selection committee. You're playing a tough schedule that gets tougher each and every week from Oregon to SC to Utah to now Oregon State, and yet you can't get a number four ranking for your trouble. But you got an opportunity here. You keep running the table, you go undefeated, you're going to get that number four ranking. Washington can clinch a spot in the Pac-12 championship with a win in this game, but it's going to be tough. I mean, we're talking about an Oregon State team that handed Utah its first L of the season, 21-7, to in Corvallis. And I'm saying in Corvallis, and the reason I said at Corvallis to start this is because the Beavers are 5-0 and at home this year. It is a tough place to go in and get a W. And I'm really excited for the quarterback pairing once again in this one, because, you know, Pac-12 having the year of the quarterback. Michael Penix Jr., probably going to be a Heisman finalist. He keeps doing what he's been doing, which is throwing for about 350 a game, right? And DJ Uwe Ungalale, who was a five-star recruit coming out, right? We thought he was going to be as good as Bryce Young. Wasn't as good as Bryce Young. Ends up transferring from Clemson to Oregon State. People thought Clemson would be fine. Turns out, no. DJ actually swayed the balance of power away from Clemson and to Oregon State because they are sitting pretty with an opportunity to get into the Pac-12 title game. And for you draft Knicks out there, DJ Uyunglele is going to be a darling at an NFL draft combine. If he vaults into the first round the way that Anthony Richardson did, know that I told you he would because he's got all the talent in the world. 95-mile fastball, he can throw a football over the mountains. He's big, he's strong, he's fast, and they are unafraid to run him in the open field, and he's got a tailback that can absolutely carry the mail, all right? Damian Martinez went over 1,000 yards rushing last week. Damian Martinez might be the best tailback that Oregon State has produced since Jaquiz Rogers and has a chance to be the best ever Oregon State tailback that they've ever had, including Steven Jackson. He's that important to what they do, and he is that talented. You're going to have a whole lot of trouble trying to stop that dude if you are the Washington defense who, let's face it, ain't been great. A- a- ain't been great. If I got a knock on Washington, it's that you remind me too much of Oklahoma in 2018-2019. You can score a bunch. You're also going to allow people to score a bunch. And a team like Oregon State will take advantage of that because they play outstanding defense and they play ball control offense the, to the point that Utah – I thought had an opportunity to go and get a win in Seattle, but couldn't quite do anything in the second half. But that's what Bryson Barnes, a quarterback. No disrespect to the pig farmer who beat up on the Heisman winner, but DJ Uyunglele is a different kind of cat. And if you allow him to go do what he can do, you're probably going to end up looking like Stanford looked, like Cal looked. Teams they put up 50 or more on. They scored 62 on Stanford last week. They are feeling themselves in Corvallis and quiet as it is kept. The Pac-2 now has control of the Pac-12 until such time as, you know, we're going to get an appeal. But we learned earlier this evening that the Pac-2 is now in control of the $400 million worth of assets that is the Pac-12, at least until the dissolution of the Pac-12. So I'm very excited to see what Oregon State does with this newfound power, with being very much OP in the Pac-12 right now. I'm also interested to see whether or not Roma Dunsey, Dylan Johnson can keep up with Michael Penix Jr., because I think those guys are having really great seasons. They'll be all Pac-12 members. But Romo Dunzi might be wide receiver two as far as All-Americans on the first team. He and Marvin Harrison Jr. has been that good. And Dylan Johnson is edging himself into the All-American conversation. Like, had to fill out my Football Writers Associ- uh, Amer- of America Association ballot. And I had a hard time trying to figure out whether or not I was going to put that dude in there because of what he has been for them, especially the last three weeks. I mean, you go for 256 against anybody. I'm going to give you 
uh, uh, salute, but to do it against the USC team in a game that meant the world to you and to them, that's no small thing, especially after having never rushed for more than 100 against anybody and then rushing for 100 against an Oregon team we all think is really good. So that's the biggest game going on on the West Coast, number five versus number 11. If you like what you've seen, consider subscribing to the number one college football show on YouTube, the Fox Sports app, or wherever you get your podcast.